Good morning, Thursday morning, heading out to Tel Aviv, bright and early to meet with Dovi Francis, who is one of the most impressive investors I think I've ever met. He's based in LA, now visiting Israel, and he's flying me out to LA in two weeks. We're going to go on a little tour in LA of his companies and then to San Francisco. And um, not to bring any spoilers, but there may or may not be a Bentley involved. Stay tuned for more on that. Then heading to Tel Aviv to have lunch at Malka, which is one of the craziest restaurants, with a company called Empower Africa, which you can hear from its name is not your typical tech company. Good friend works there. Two good friends work there. More on that later. A couple other meetings. And then tonight, heading back to Tel Aviv to meet with Rob and Shiraz. Shiraz was on the vlog a couple of episodes ago. Supermodel. Rob is a CEO of a company called Neo in the art space. Just Super cool people. Pumped to meet them, pumped for this day, and pumped for the weekend. Here we go. Made it to Tel Aviv and I got a parking on the street here in Tel Aviv. I have 15 minutes till my meeting with Dovi Francis, who is just an awesome dude. Hopefully he'll agree to go on camera. And then, yeah, I'm meeting a little bit later, so I'm pretty chill morning this morning, actually, which makes me very happy because this week has been insane. Pumped to catch up with Dovi, though. I'm sitting here in Tel Aviv. First of all, it's a perfect day here, but more importantly, with someone who is quite literally a legend. What do I mean by that? He's, he's, he's like, he's getting upset here, but what do I mean by that? I mean, first of all, you talk about VCs, you talk about investors, you talk about their returns. I mean, there's a chart and then there's people that break the chart. That's one example of why he's a legend, but also he has the best hair in tech. All right, who, who are you? What's your name? I'm Dobby Francis. By the way, you're like, listen, man, I'm, I'm a star, I'm starstruck, my friend. I'm starstruck. Let's, let's just, let's just, uh, let's just, Get to the punchline. Yeah, let's do it. In two weeks. Two yeah. weeks, not two weeks. In a month. In a month. Let me let me tell you a little story. Let me tell you a little story. This, this is a story. Hey, tell, wait, tell, tell, I won't see your funder. I'm, I'm in Tel Aviv, like a couple, like I would say six months ago, and I uh, I take a picture of a Bentley that just drives right by me. Am I gonna say this? <laughs> there, 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 it bombs. I take a picture of a Bentley that drives by me, and I, and I post it on Facebook. And ten seconds later, Dobi uh, messages me a picture of his of his B on his uh, <laughs> steering wheel with a note that says, "Waiting for you in L.A." So bottom line is, here's the punchline. In about a month, we're going out there. That's where Dovi lives in LA. And we're going on a little road trip, all of his companies. And we'll talk about those companies in a second. And then we're taking his Bentley and driving it to San Francisco. So basically like you are fulfilling my dream, my yeah. ultimate, ultimate dream. You're driving it. Dude, you don't understand how much I love Bentleys. Like you don't even understand by the way. It's not, I cannot wait. All right, let's talk, let's talk business here. That's good. So who is Dovi? Give me some background. Who's Dovi Francis? This is the second time we're meeting, but I feel like we're brothers from another mother. Yeah, yeah. How much time do we have? Like uh, one minute? Yeah, like, quick? No, five, 10 minutes. Oh, yeah. and one more thing I want to mention before we talk about your companies, you're also a celebrity because, are you going to talk about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. It's already on TV, right? Yeah. Why are you a celebrity? Well, I'm uh, on the panel of Shark Tank. I'm one of the sharks on Shark, Shark Tank on uh, Channel 12. Along with some incredible people. Yeah, actually, our next season is coming. By the way, nobody knows, but it's coming January 7th, most likely, wow. to okay. catch it. Yeah. Who are the other panel? Primetime TV. Who are the other ju judges there? So we have Oren Dobronski, whom you have met, Hummus, right? yeah. the man and the legend. Yeah. We have uh, Yasmin Lukat, who is just ridiculously amazing. Yasmin is just beautiful, beautiful. smart, Love talented, her. the whole amazing. package. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, Eldad Tamir, Zohar. Tamir Fishman. That's all. And we have Zohar Levkovich. Love it. Beautiful. Yeah. He has a new startup, Zohar, right? He does, yeah. Light? Actually, with a novel cause, yeah, light. Yeah, light. Yeah, I wrote about them on Jerusalem Post. Interesting post yesterday, right? About he, how they're helping his uh, posts, the FBI by the way? and, and yeah, other yeah. government agencies find uh, children, child molesters and stuff like that. He's, so. His posts, by the way, cracked me up, except for that. That wasn't a funny post, but in general, his posts are hilarious. His sarcasm, hilarious. Yeah. All right, let's talk business here. Give me give me your background. Give me your 30-second elevator pitch, and let's let's talk a little bit about some of your portfolio companies, which, by the way, you guys are going to see in around a month, because we're going to go you know, company to company. You're going to meet literally, and, I'm, and I don't say this lightly, literally some of the world's best entrepreneurs. And when I say that, I mean, I have numbers to back that up. Just to give one example, I'll just throw it out there. Trip Action, it's a company that launched when? 2015. 2015, it is now worth, sit down, $4 billion. Raised 300 million from Andreessen Horowitz, the world's maybe top VC. We're talking about a company, Unicorn doesn't even begin to cut it. I mean, I don't even know, what do you call a $4 billion company? If a Unicorn is a $1 billion company, what's a $4 billion? I don't even know. I don't know. know. Next year, I can, uh, maybe in a year and a half, I can give you a better answer because uh, I know that $10 billion is a decacorn and it's definitely heading there. I love it. So, yeah. And that's just exactly. one example among several of, of Toby's investments that are just scaling, exploding. But before we get there, give me your background. What's your story? Yeah. I'm, uh, okay. I was born in Cholom. 
which is obviously for, for the Americans uh, who are listening to the podcast, is a suburb of Tel Aviv. Right. Uh, my, I feel like my... everything's a suburb of Tel Aviv. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Know. Yeah. We're four brothers. We moved from Cologne to Rishon Lezayn. From there, I went to the army. I spent uh, four and a half years in the army, in the Nachal, and then later in Officers Academy, back to the, back to the battalion, back to the academy uh, as an instructor, and then a company commander. Then went to Ben Gurion University, got my bachelor's degree. My roommate in college, by the way, and the reason why I got into Silicon Valley in 2011 uh, is Dror Berman. The one and only? The one and only, who runs Innovation Endeavors with, with his partners, Eric, uh, and, and a few that, others. That's Eric Schmidt, by the way, in case you were, Eric you know, you know only like the chairman yeah, of like... Being casual. <laughs> Eric, yeah. you and Mira on yeah. first name basis, yeah, okay. <laughs> Yeah, that's, by the way, I, I met him when he was in Israel, but that's someone on my bucket list to actually interview yeah. one, day, one day. Yeah, go on. Anyway, uh, so, so after like two people with ADD, just like having <laughs> a great. casual conversation. We have the best time, dude. Be so much fun. We're going to have the best freaking time. <laughs> so excited. Yeah, go so, on. Yeah, so after uh, Ben Gurion, I uh, went, uh, got my uh, MBA at UCLA Anderson, then got to work in banking. So we're sitting just in front of Bank Lomi, which is kind of funny, talking just about the demise, the demise of banking as a fintech investor. But yeah. I worked as a, as a banker, as a wealth manager right. for Deutsche Bank. Uh, through Deutsche Bank, I met uh, a client that I brought to the bank, a Russian billionaire named Sergei Grishin. I became his right-hand man, yep. uh, left the bank, led his family office for half a decade, started investing in various categories, including uh, including venture capital once Dror joined Eric. And, and through Dror and Eric, met with Oren Zev and Joel Lonsdale and Peter Thiel and Yuri Milner and a bunch of wait, really wait, good wait, investors. Wait, wait. I, need, I need to pause on the words yeah. Oren Zev for one second. The man in the legend. The Oren Zev, by the way, you know, but I think it's it's pretty much an objective, unbiased truth that he is the world's top investor. I, 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 and if it, and if uh, some people question it, I think in about 24 to 36 months it will be unquestionable and unquestionable. And Oren has been my uh, my mentor, uh, dear friend, business partner for many many years now, along with Raw. Really, I really look up to uh, to both of them. So I'll tell you something. Have you ever heard a VC saying that he has mentors? No. Right? I Never. haven't, actually. Very I haven't. interesting, right? I'll tell you one thing. I, uh, like, Dror and I are, are friends on Facebook. I think we've met a couple of times. We've never actually sat down and talked shop. But Oren and I have met many times and schmoozed in his cafe. What's the name of the cafe? He's Venetia. In? Venetia, yeah. So, like, and, and I want to tell you something. Let me tell you one thing. I don't know how many investments he's made. I don't know. But I know some of his companies. And the dude is just off the charts. And he always, but always without exception, acts like a mensch. Always. Totally. It's it's truly unbelievable. And, and when I look at people that, you know, turn VC and then all of a sudden they have egos, I see, like, I think to myself, dude, like, who the... Look at Oren Zev. And look how he behaves and look how you're behaving. Like, he is just a different level. I'm a huge, huge Oren Zev fan. Okay, continue. Yes. Yeah. By the way, the reason why why no VC should have ego is because it's not about us. Right. It's about our portfolio companies. Yeah, 100%. That's all. That's all. Yep. Who is your customer? Right. By the way, that's, who that's, do you add value to, and how do you add value? That's Those very, are the things that matter. That's a very important question that that we should probably talk about when it comes to equity crowdfunding and why I think it's a broken model. Yeah. Who is your customer when you're when you're an equity crowdfunding platform? Is your customer your investors or your startups? If you're a VC that the startup is not your customer, then you're doing it wrong. But anyway, that's a topic for another okay. time. Okay. So anyway, so started investing in Silicon Valley. December of 2011 was my first deal, which was, which was a seed investment in a company called Homelight, that today is half a billion dollars company, and and where I'm uh, not the third largest investor in the company, but I also introduced them to a bunch of their investors, including, by the way. Uh, Orange Zev. Amazing. Uh, but started in 20, uh, started December of 2011, has invested to date in about 50 uh, portfolio companies be between all of our funds, uh, managing about a quarter billion dollars, raised it single handedly. I do not have any partners. I make investment decisions by myself. That's incredible. I love fintech. That's my thing. Wow. I love fintech. Uh, I've been doing fintech exclusively since 2014 and have invested in some amazing, amazing financial technology companies. Some of them are public, uh, some of them are not public yet, meaning in terms of, uh, in yeah. terms of news about, right. in the press about our, us leading. But some uh, upcoming run. announcements are pretty some amazing Some really, companies. really cool companies. Yeah. We'll talk about that when you get to yeah. LA. And that's what I've been doing ever since. I left the family office in May of 2015 mm -hmm. uh, just to focus on my venture capital career, and that's all I'm doing. All right, but there's one thing you're forgetting. Tovi. My you, beautiful wife, to, my kids. Of what? course, well, that's important too, but I wasn't talking yeah. about that. I'm just gonna say, like, you know, you, you gotta pay me for PR, man. What is this? You, are you forgetting? Listen, listen, listen. It's one thing you're forgetting. You know, managing you know that much money investing in that many it's all great adding value Thank totally you. I totally forgot listen these yeah. companies we started talking about without it, uh, without talking too much you know obviously it's confidential sensitive right. information we're not giving you details but these companies when they look at their at the, at the various investors they have in the company Dovi is at the, consistently at the top of the list in terms of the value that he brings and he and when I say value by the way that's a very abstract term but it's not abstract yeah maybe I, I'll elaborate on that yeah. there, what do you do for your companies things, there are three things that matter right I mean because I think we, we live in an era where there is abundance of capital right so as a conduit of capital which is venture capital by the way which is also institutional investing, which is fund of funds. You're a conduit of capital, right? You take money from people 
professional institutions and you deploy it into portfolio companies. Yep. You need to choose the companies, number one. So you need to have a thesis that works, okay? But after you have chosen and you have invested money, then it, the, the real work begins. And it's that process about, starts. It's not just about sitting up at a board meeting and once a quarter and making a right. wise comment, right? It's about three things that matter to entrepreneurs. Number one, bottom line, yep. right? So introducing them to other customers, especially as because I do business to business, so I do software. So introducing them to other clients that can add to the bottom line, number one. Number two, introducing them to employees in the C-suite level that can help the company continue to grow. Mm -hmm. Number three, introducing them to other investors, right? Right. And by the way, it's very important and not to be taken for granted. You need other deep-pocketed investors around the table with you. Smart investors. As you scale and grow the company, smart money, of yep. course, and yep. people that are like-minded. Right. So that you have worked with in the past, you can trust them. It's not just about money. So in that respect, that's why I love to collaborate with Drawer and with Ed and with Doran, right? But, but I'm going to say one more thing, if I may. There, you know, there are a lot of value-add investors out there. Everyone's, there's no such thing as an investor that says we don't provide value. Everyone says they provide value, but, but, Do, but Dovi Francis literally opens his link. No, but you literally open your LinkedIn and you look, who do I know? And you literally make those connections, like hands on, get your hands dirty. That's, that's very, very rare, very yeah. rare. I could probably count on one hand the amount of investors at your, at your level that do that. That's totally. very rare. That's incredible. Listen, and, and that's the reason you're invested in some of these insane companies. You throw out some names, some of your, some of your you know, portfolio yeah. companies. So we, so we have Homelight, we have Sunbeat. Both of them are actually super interesting companies. I'm, I'm the first investor in, in both of them and I've been a large, a large contributor to the companies over the past six, uh, six years now. Wow. Right? Actually, in, in Sunbeat's case, it's actually uh, four years. Okay. But in Homelight, Homelight was founded in 2012. So okay. going eight years now. That's insane. That's, Unbelievable, right? That's a lot of you know, because stamina. It's, it's actually very interesting because the, the time it takes to exit from a good company, not a bad company, is 7.9 years on average Wow. from, from the seed. That's an interesting number. Right? So anyway, so, okay. so Homelight, Sunbeat, Tipalti, Trip Actions, Adapar, SoFi, uh, wow. and really some, some really category-defining financial That's, technology companies. I mean, let's just talk about Tipalti for one second. When, yeah. did you, when did you get in on Tipalti? I got in 2012 was my first check. So it was early. I had a $20 million valuation, yeah. $20 million. What are they worth yeah. now? Half yeah. a billion? Tipalti was co-founded by, by Oren Zev and by Chen Amit. Yeah. And they invited me uh, to join in 2012, and I actually led their series, uh, I think it was Series B. What are they worth now? Uh, half a billion dollars almost, okay. 460 million dollars. When did you get like it on trip, trip Actions? 20 million dollars valuation. <laughs> That's like a joke, 20 million dollars worth like 4 billion. No, I'm just joking. 20 million no. dollar value, is that, no. by the way, I, that's, Dude, that just that, like literally, if you'd made one investment, just that. You just returned everything a hundred times. Yeah, quite like Oh my lord, that's insane. Dovi, yeah, thank you. bottom line is, dude, I don't, uh, listen, don't tell anyone that I pay you to be my friend, okay, man? Yeah. I don't know, I don't even know but, why he looks in my direction, but You listen. know, I want to say something. I think that the fun is, you know, we all talk about valuations because it's something we can we can hold on to, quantify, right? But yeah. I think we can quantify, but I think what's far more interesting is the relationship with the founders and the executive team. To me, it fulfills me, right? right? To add value to them and to be their friends and to be their mentor and to work together. Yep. And I learn a lot from them as well. The second, the second thing is, to see those companies taking pieces of what was well entrenched, kind of like uh, the strongholds of the financial services industry, right. and just tear them apart. Whether it's SMB insurance, whether it's a point of sale financing like Sunbeat, whether it's real estate transactions like Homelight, whether it's corporate travel like Trip Actions, like seeing them crushing yeah. entrenched uh, 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 incumbents right. is, uh, is, is just great. Let so me, I'm, Let me yeah. just ask you one more question. Did you ever get diagnosed with ADD or are you just saying that you're ADD? I, I never got diagnosed, but, I was, I, but I'll tell you what, I was always a terrible student, yeah. you know, although, I have like, I, although I have two degrees yeah. from you know, prestigious universities and stuff like that, I, I always had difficulties like adhering to the formula. And I think, by the way, that's why I'm a pretty good venture capitalist. I was just about to say that. It's your <laughs> biggest gift. Yeah, I think so. It's my biggest gift, no question about it. What I get done in one day, most people get done in a month, because I'm, I'm doing 50,000 things at once. And by the way, I've optimized my career for ADD. I love it. I'm, I'm, never, I'm never routine, just running around. It's the greatest. Anyway, dude, listen, bottom line is like, by the way, if you, if you want to know like what hyperintelligence looks like, like, it's just ridiculous. Your, your brain like operates like a Lamborghini. I thought I'm just good looking, but, but fine. Right, fine. fine. I wasn't going to say anything. But, <laughs> anyway, listen, dude, super duper duper, like uh, that's the understatement of the century. Pumped to be hanging out next month. Thank you. Likewise. Cannot wait to, hang, to, to try that Bentley. Like, that, it's going to be lots of fun. I cannot wait. You should dude. also... You, you should also try the Escalade. It's also a nice car. I know you like like super mm, fast. I don't know. Cars. I know. I, like, listen, nice, that's stable. luxurious. I'm yeah. saying like, but, but the Bentley, what kind of Bentley do you have, by the way? Just the uh, just. Yeah, you can't start it. The, 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 no, just, <laughs> just. I, I don't even know. Is it the one with the two doors that is very fast? The think. Continental. Yeah, the Continental. Oh my Sorry. God, the, yeah, I didn't yeah, even no, know it's there was a Continental. It's a beautiful car, it's great. and it's fast as hell. Yeah, it's fast. Holy cow! I cannot I think wait. It's like zero zero to sixteen. Honestly, I don't know what I'm more excited to be truth to be honest with you. I don't know what I'm more excited about. Truthfully, meeting the companies. That's what I was about to say. To meet Ariel or to the CEO. Of trip actions or to get that to get in that Bentley. I don't know what I'm more excited about, but either way, it's going to be a fantastic trip. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward, dude. And thank you for the opportunity, man. Of course. And we'll see you guys there. Yeah, I'm super pumped. Thank you so much, man. Is it weird to say that I have a man crush on Dovi? 
I'm asking for a friend. But seriously, jokes aside, how impressive is that dude? And how excited do you think I am to go to LA and SF next, next month to drive a Bentley and meet some of these companies? How excited do you think I am? Oh wait, give me a number, how excited? Holy cow. Dude, th that, that meeting, second meeting, second time we ever met. I feel like I've known him for decades. Cannot wait to hang with the guy. Now heading to Malka, which is one of the best restaurants in Tel Aviv, to meet a really, really impactful company doing incredible things in Africa. More on that soon. Park my car. I'm just gonna say right now, with gas prices in this country, I cannot imagine what the owner of this bad boy has to pay for gas every month. Look how big this thing is. Full-blown Escalade in Tel Aviv. That is not something you see often. Holy heck, that's large. Wow, it's a big freaking car. Well, next month I'll be driving that bad boy in LA along with the Bentley Continental. Cadillac Escalade. I love cars. You know, I don't speak about it very often, but I'm not a big money guy. I don't get, I'm not driven by money, but cars? Yeah, that's up there. One day, one day. I'm so excited to drive that Bentley. I cannot, cannot tell you, so excited. All right, so people ask me pretty much every day, what is every company's biggest challenge? And the answer usually is commercialization. What do I mean by that? I mean, you know, startups are building stuff. How do you get it into the world, the world's hands, right? And then I meet a company today that is actually flipping that on its head and saying, there's tremendous potential somewhere, untapped potential. We're gonna take that and we're gonna bring it to our world. So it's literally flipping it on its head. Who are you, what's your name, and how long do we know each other? My name is Zezi Rappaport. CEO of Empower Africa, no hill growing up as a kid. It's a true story, by the way. Inspiring from a young age. There you go. How to get out there. Huh? Yeah, I learned everything I know from you, my friend. <laughs> so, can we just give a little background on who you are, or you don't want to go there? So, who's Ezzy Rappaport? Like, who's, who, who's Rappaport? Well, we're just a nice, uh, nice family. I have a father, mother live in Jerusalem, hybrid U.S. Israelis, uh, grew up in New York, Riverdale, the Bronx, let, let me, Jerusalem, New York, Tel Aviv. Let me pitch this for you. Around the world. May I pitch this for you? Yes. All right. What do I always talk about when I talk about marketing? What do I tell startups all the time? One word, I said, you know, marketing and branding, all that stuff, that stuff is, is just empty words. What's it all about? It's about ownership. The Rappaport family owns the diamond industry. Is that fair? We drive ethical <laughs> and transparent, competitive, efficient markets. With diamonds, you have to be very don't careful. There's, we don't, no, don't own any diamonds, diamonds. Oh, we don't own any that's, mines. That's actually really it's important. It's all about driving ethical and transparent trade and uh, really creating value through human connection. Thank you for so, that correction, because that's important. Yeah, very important. When I say you own, I didn't mean you own diamonds, but when it comes to the diamond industry, the Rappaport name is pretty yeah. much the biggest We were name. founded to break this, the monopoly that the diamond industry was in Beautiful. in the 1970s. And today, it's free markets, Beautiful. and uh, we run the largest trading network in the world for diamonds. Beautiful. Not myself, but my family's business. Beautiful. Now, here's the thing, right? Yeah. You grew up in, in that incredible business. You took your business sense, you took your knowledge, you took your expertise, and you said, all right, but wait a second. There's this, literally this untapped potential. This entire continent called Africa that, I mean, I'm gonna give a very silly example, you'll forgive me, but in Israel, right, what's the biggest challenge? You know, manpower, more engineers. There's entire populations that are just untapped, like for example, ultra-Orthodox, like for example, Arab, right? And so whoever's able to crack that and really leverage and tap into that community can really make a, a, like a change in the entire ecosystem. That times 100 million is what you're, what you're aiming to do, which is take this humongous beast of a continent, Africa, and say poverty, say talent, say- 40% unemployment. 40% unemployment, 40% uneducated youth. The, these people are literally just like fruit to be, you know, what's, how does the, youth. how does, what's it called? How does, uh, how does, oh, hanging. No, what's the, what's the song? Mosh, name is Shugaim, how does it go? Uh, <laughs> you wanna like, you wanna, you wanna pluck the things. You wanna, yeah. you got, it's just, okay, tell me, what, what is Empower Africa? Talk to me, give me the, give me the elevator pitch, hit me. Yeah, so Empower Africa is focused on empowering people by enhancing investment, trade, and job creation. We are big proponents for trade over aid and that we want to uplift people through human connection. When two people work together, they can create significant value than working in isolation. Okay, so hold on, I, I gotta stop you for one second. Yes. You said an incredible amount of things just now in like two yeah. sentences, and I'm gonna slow down for the rest of us dumb people, all right, slow down here. Trade over aid, let's just talk about that for one second. Is that, I don't know who coined that, but that's brilliant. Is that Chai? Who, is, that, is that your thing, or is that, is that a thing? Trade over, you made that, trade over teamwork. aid? teamwork. I, I, I mean, let's talk about that for one second, right? say so, trade not aid, but aid, of, unfortunately, is still dying necessary in Africa. There's a lot of people living in conditions that they were not going to be able to create much value. Now they're older, so their aid is definitely 
important to keep people alive. Right, but hold on, hold yes. on, hold on, hold on a second. I want, I want to focus on the trade versus aid yes, thing. Yes. What is better than giving a poor person $5? Giving a poor person money, yes. I mean a job to make money, right? Let him sustain himself or her sustain herself. Giving her the opportunity to, create, to, to generate $5 is better than giving them $5. <laughs> trade over aid. It's very nice to deploy capital and, and charity and all. It's yeah. nice. I'm not, I'm not Rambam doing says, better to teach Maimonides. a man. Maimonides. Maimonides. Better it. to teach a man how to fish than to give him a fish, right? Beautiful. So, beautiful. Shai beautiful says thing. it better. How it's does a beautiful it, like, thing. Fish a day. You give day. someone the opportunity to sustain themselves is better than just giving someone charity. What you're doing is not, and by the way, I, holy cow, I cannot believe who's here right now. I cannot believe who's here. Holy cow. <laughs> I'm so happy right now, we're in the middle of an interview. Hold on. Come here, who are you? My favorite person, who are you? What's going on? I'm Tamar from you, you, Happy birthday, right? Yesterday was my yeah. birthday. I'm following you, I'm following. <laughs> Tamar from what do you do? I am the VP of marketing. By the way, you just witnessed ADD in action. I'm just letting you guys know that. Just pointing that out. <laughs> <laughs> these guys are changing Africa. Tamar, they're changing Amazing. Africa, these guys. Empower Africa. That's serious stuff. Wait, so what does Tamar do? Quick. I'm the VP of marketing at Skyline AI. You've been on the vlog before. I have. At the conference. What I conference have. was that? Prop Tech. Prop Tech. Yeah. You look like a really good into the memory. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. And next Friday, I'm moving to New York. I'm relocating back with Skyline AI. I, I didn't, did I approve of this? You did. Didn't, but you, that's why I was afraid to be with you now. I Vito. Like. Vito. What do you mean you're leaving? What? You're leaving me? But, but Hillel, do you remember the time that we bumped into each other in Times Square? I do. Yes. Of course I remember. I have a picture of it on Facebook. So it'll happen again. Yeah, but you're like for good? For now? For now. This is a bossa. All right, that's not good. But I'm going to be in New York a lot, so we'll hang out there. I know. I'm not I'll worried. let you know. But wow, that's big news. Oh my God. You heard it here first, first folks. Listen, I'm gonna dismiss you because we're doing this thing. So but nice to oh my see gosh! You. Wait, I should have known Hamid Malka. I'm gonna next I'm Friday. Gonna see you next Friday. So if you're on Roth show, please let's get coffee. Let's do coffee freely. Seriously. To. Sorry so to good interrupt. to see you okay. and happy birthday again. Thank you. Oh my gosh, that's happy like birthday. the biggest fan, biggest fan ever, ever. Bye. Okay. I just want to mention. Focus, you, hello. Yes, yes. <laughs> I want to mention. You asked me of Power Africa. Yes. And we have three main business models. First of all, the Empower Africa business network. This is a centralized portal yep. for all the companies driving development in Africa. Mm -hmm. Think LinkedIn meets Bloomberg. Okay? For Africa. Customize LinkedIn for Africa. Find who are the best companies operating in what sectors, what countries, what's their proven track record. Letters of recommendation at the same time, you have a database, a knowledge base, a feasibility studies, very valuable information Incredible. for these businesses on each country and sector. And this is about to launch 2020. We're just starting our beta. Second thing is international events and trade missions. We want to create a lot of attention on Africa. What are the challenges? And specifically, what are the opportunities and how the private sector can and has to play a vital role in building partnership relationships with the grassroots, with the local private sector, with the leaders of government. I'm getting there, hold on. And the yep. third thing yep. um, is after the business network and the international events and sector-focused trade missions to the countries in Africa, the third thing is project facilitation and consulting. We want to take st major strategic projects with select companies and see the project completed from A to Z. Beautiful, here's the thing. We are dedicated on driving tangible results for the grassroots. We have to get these people on water, on electricity, living a dignified life, and to their full Dude, potential. It's like a machine, this guy. 600 million people <laughs> living in extreme poverty. I mean? Under two dollars. 600 million people in 2019, human beings, no water, no electricity, no medicine, and they are dying, not, they're actually, some of them are physically dying, and some of them are dying Inside. to be contributing members of society. They want the opportunity, and all they need is a little attention, a little human connection, right. and they can be amazing contributing forces in the world, and some of them are proving that it can be done, and there's many amazing Africans already, thought leaders, major people doing breakthrough innovation, and there's just so many that are still left in the dark that we need to shine a light on and we need to bring the right people to the table. Wait, so here's the thing. First of all, you're hired. Okay. You're hired. You can, do by, you can do by marketing anytime. But more importantly, like I said before, you know, you said before uh, um, trade over aid, but put another way, I came to this meeting today literally to eat Malka, but more importantly, I thought you guys were a nonprofit. I really did. I'm, I'm, I'm going to admit it. But you're actually not a nonprofit because most of the world is saying they're living in poverty. Let's get them, out, get them out of poverty. You're taking it one step further. Let's get them out of poverty and let them be productive. So you're actually building a for profit business to help these guys create, facilitate real business in the world. Business is the only thing that's yes, sustainable and scalable. Yes. 
One of the very basic lessons I learned at Harvard Business School is that business is the only thing that drives sustainable and scalable solutions. Love it. Why be nonprofit when everybody can make a profit? Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> and Listen that's what we need to do. We need to drive sustainable prosperity in Africa, and we can only do that by doing it together. We need that diversity mix. We can't just dump aid money on a problem. It's about human attention. It's about us putting our minds together, our business minds together, because these people in Africa can create a lot of value, and we just need to we just need to work. I'm together. just gonna say one thing: if the business thing doesn't work out for you, you can be in politics. Yeah. So you got you got it going on, you charisma and all that stuff. But we need to have thing. all stakeholders at the table. So we are doing a lot of interaction with with politicians, important. and they're very important. And a big part is in helping the politicians know how to interface with the private sector. Love it. There's definitely a lot of communication and models that need to be developed on that front. Okay. What's the website? EmpowerAfrica.com. If someone's watching this and they want to partake in this journey of yours, in this mission, let's call it a mission, right? Whether it's an investor, whether it's a country, whoever it may be. Because, yes. uh, I mean, I've had some truly outrageous stories. Like some guy saw my vlog and uh, you told me you met with someone. Yes, yes, Neil Ackerman, J and J, awesome guy. Through, I mean, I mean, he's really a legend. So it's human point connection. Is, we create value by through human connection. A few people That's watch it. these videos. If someone's yes. watching this, they want to engage. What is the best way to get in touch with you guys? Who, who should they contact? They could contact Shy Bernstein, our VP of Operation and Biz Dev. Who also awesome happens to be ass dude. Who also yes. ap also happens to be a very very strikingly handsome individual. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. Inside. Look at that guy. He's more beautiful inside. <laughs> what's, his, what's Shai's email? S H A I at empowerafrica.com. Beautiful. Dude, incredible stuff. You let me know how I can help. Incredible mission. I want in. Anything, God I, do, bless, anything I do to help. God bless. All I want in return is lunch at Malka. And I just want to mention I think if there's any. <laughs> you missed that joke. Yeah. Um, what? You missed my joke. It's man. not a joke. We're going to have celebrations here. We're going to have parties yeah. here. We'll do it. We'll do it. Bonkers, all, the food. Yeah, we're, gonna, we're going all the way Crazy. up. We're going all the way up. You know why? Because we have the values and we're connecting with amazing, meaningful people. And uh, we're gonna just. Help. You let me know how I can help. We're building. We're, our rocket ship is taking off. Love it. Africa's going. Places. All the way up. Yes. Love it, dude. Thank you so much, man. Appreciate the it. Sky and beyond. Should do this bless. more often, thanks. We not wait another 10 years, okay? Oh, <laughs> Made it home. What a day. What a day. And what a week. Next week is Hanukkah, actually, so I'm only working one or two days. It's going to be a very relaxed week, but I'll probably vlog at least one day next week. See you then.